All right, now uh, uh, tell us your name. Uh, Donald Vincent. Um, and uh, what, um, your uh, job title? Uh, I'm an uh, associate professor of digital media and communication at Hilbert College. Um, uh, and uh, how, long have you, uh, how long have you been here at Hilbert? Uh, this is my sixth year at Hilbert College. Uh, what's, uh, what's your favorite thing about teaching here at Hilbert? Hmm. Well, my favorite thing about, about teaching uh, at Hilbert College is the, uh, the, the students. I just really enjoy interacting with young people, you know, particularly as I, as I get older um, and maybe uh, out of touch with, uh, um, with you know, younger culture. You know, it's nice to, to keep in touch with, with, uh, um, with younger people. But, you know, I, I just like, uh, I, I like interacting. Uh, interacting with people and um, this is I know it's just a comfortable way for for me to to, to do that and you know, I guess I'm also somewhat uh, egotistical so I, I like to be the the center of attention sometimes egotistical yeah is that how you say is that, is that how you think all college professors are to yes some extent, yes to some extent? yeah all of them are <laughs> um, but yeah I mean there, there's certainly some egotism there or, or maybe it's just uh, you know I, I guess I I think everybody has a dream in their life. You know, they want to be, a, you know, the star of a show or, you know, the front man of a band or something like that. And so, you know, I couldn't do any of those things. So, um, you know, for a short period of time, and even if it's just a, a small group of people, you know, I'm kind of the, you know, I'm the star of the show. So, so I like that as well. But no, but really the, the, the I, I just like, you know, hanging out with, with young people. Mm -hmm. um, now, you also worked in the radio business. Yep. Um, uh, uh, how long? Uh, how long does he were you in the radio business? Uh, I'm not sure. It, it, uh, it seems longer than it was actually. Probably um, three or four years. I actually, started out as a as an intern. Um, you know, my last semester of college, um, and I I interned in the promotions department, um, which was nice. Um, you know, uh, particularly you know that's actually where I got uh, you know a lot of my you know sort of marketing experience, or it introduced me sort of to the world of, of marketing and, um, you know, figuring out how to, you know, um, get your station's logo out there and present at, at events and, um, you know, figuring out, you know, how you can draw people to the station. Um, and also at the same time, I ended up, you know, doing some, some production work, you know, which was nice. Uh, and then I got hired as, as a promotions assistant. So I was, you know, driving the van and, um, you know, setting up events, but it was cool. You know, I got to go to a lot of shows and sporting events and, you know, I met some, some famous people here and there. Um, but, you know, that really wasn't what I wanted to do in radio. You know, I really uh, intended to, to be doing stuff, um, you know, on the air um, or, you know, at least having something to do with the, the on-air product. So eventually I got the oppor opportunity to move over to the programming side. Um, I was actually board opping. Um, yeah, um, yeah, uh, yeah. How did that go? How did board opping? How was the board opping? Um, no, but I mean, it's... Uh, it's interesting. So I was actually board opping the, the Howard Stern show locally. Really? Yeah. That like? um, it was cool. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not as exciting as it sounds, I guess, but, um, you know, because basically, you know, the feed would, would come in and, and um, so you're there kind of listening and then you just, uh, you know, have to make sure the, the right commercials yes, play at the right time. from an outside source as opposed to being in the, right. in the studio. Yeah. Um, but that was cool. You know, uh, it, it was tough waking up in the morning uh, and I had a million other tasks. Um, that I also had to perform kind of while the show was, was going on. Uh, what would you say your favorite part about working in the, uh, well, at least the promotions and the promotion side of the, of, uh, of the radio? Uh, the best part of it? Um, ah, that's, that's interesting. Or just in general? Um, as far as promotions go, I, I guess the opportunity to, you know, just to be um, at events. You kind of feel like you're, um, actually I was, so I, I worked in, in Rochester and I was new to the area. So, um, as a promotions person, I was, you know, driving all over town and I was going to events every, you know, nightclubs and, and things like that. And so, I mean, I learned the city, um, you know, in just a few weeks. So, um, you know, you really can feel like you're, you've got your finger on the pulse of a, a community because you're just out there um, doing things all the time. Um, but, I, you know, I particularly um, 
liked. So I'd af actually, after I was a board op, I kind of moved up and I became the, the music director for two stations. And um, yeah, my favorite part was really just figuring out, you know, what songs we were going to play um, in, in what rotation and, um, you know, figuring out what two songs should go together in a set. You know, I, I enjoyed just that like, kind of thing. Just like kind of cre uh, creative stuff? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of it, I mean, particularly because I was working in commercial corporate radio, um, you know, it wasn't always a very, you know, um, creative experience. Um, but, um, but, but I, I, you know, I did have that opportunity. You know, I could, you know, pick out songs that I thought were, were going to be hits and that would work or, um, you know, kind of putting together the, the perfect hour of music or something was, was, was kind of fun. I also enjoyed um, writing copy. So, you know, I would write copy for the promotional liners that would, would run on the station. And um, I, I worked for an active rock station that was um, targeting males um, 18 to 34. So you could be kind of edgy with it and have lots of sexual innuendo in the, in the lines and stuff. So, I mean, that was always fun to, to, to write that stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, why, uh, why did you choose radio of all the, of all the media outlets? You could have chosen um, television. Uh, that's a good question. I, I guess I, um, I've actually found out since that I'm sort of like a, I guess they call it like an oral learner or an audio learner. So I, I think I'm just kind of geared more to, to sound than, than visual. Um, you know, I, I, you know, in college, you know, I dealt a little bit with, with, uh, you know, video production and stuff like that. But I, I guess I always just cared more about the, um, sound, you know, so I think I, uh, I've just had a, a stronger connection with music and, and radio, uh, radio personalities. Um, now, um, a lot of uh, a lot of colleges uh, uh, nowadays, um, a lot of colleges have have a have a radio station, whether it's whether it's online or, or actual analog. Um, mm. Did they have anything like that when you were when you were in college? Yep. Yeah. I uh, when I, I went to Geneseo, so we, we had uh, Geneseo, W. Geneseo. My brother actually goes. There. Oh, good, good. Yeah, my sister went there, so. Um, he's, uh, he's loving it. Is he? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Good. Um, but yeah, so we had WGSU there. I had a. I actually didn't um, end up working there till like my last year at at the college, I think. Um, but you know, I did a shift in the middle of the night, and it was a lot of fun. We actually had, you know, we still had like a record player there, uh, and we had lots of we had lots of cool old uh, old video, or I'm sorry, old vinyl, um, and, uh, and I, you know, I played lots of stuff that I that I like. But we also had like a modern rotation of music that was that was cool. Now, um, as a college kid, getting um, interning with a with a major with a major radio station was that intimidating? Would you say? Um, it's intimidating when you when you start out, um, you know, like the interview process, and then going there, and I mean, there's just a whole, um, you know, system or operation going on, and you have no clue, um, you know, what what's happening and, and what your role is supposed to be. So it certainly is intimidating, and uh, you know, I can be somewhat of a a, a shy person, uh, you know, with people I don't know. So. Um, you know, I had to kind of challenge myself to kind of speak up and say, hey, no, I can do that. Or, you know, no, I want to be on the air or something like that. So, um, you know, an important thing to be uh, is, is assertive, okay, even if it's not in your, in your nature. You know, you got to let people know you're there because otherwise you just kind of, you kind of blend in and, and people don't take notice of you. Uh, so other than that, what other, uh, uh, what other advice would you give to a, uh, to a college student who, um, who wants to get into the radio business other than... Don't. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I mean, it, it can be a, lo a lot of fun. Um, you know, I, I you know, it, certainly it's a, it's an industry that's um, that's changing. Um, there's there's fewer 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 and fewer jobs available. Um, companies are are hesitant to hire people full time. You know, so um, you know, I know lots of people that have been working at the same station for years, and they can't. They're still like part timers, even though they're working like 39 hours or something. So they don't have to get paid benefits. So, um, so it is tough. But uh, I wouldn't discourage people if it really is their dream, um, you know, to, to try working in, in radio. Because um, if you have the talent and if you really work hard, um, you know, I think you, there is a place for you. Um, but you know, what radio will look like in a few years, I, I'm not sure. I mean, certainly online components um, are, are much more important than before. Yeah, speaking of online radio, um, here at Hill. Um, yeah, here at Hilbert we have the uh, we have uh, Hawk Radio, which is an online station. Uh, now uh, you're the uh, you're the 
sort of starter of that? Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I guess I, I can take credit for for launching the the radio station. Yeah, well, uh, what made you think of the, of of an of an on, of having a, a, of Hilbert having an online radio station? Like, what 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 sort of sparked that interest? Sort of sparked um, that? Well, it just seemed. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, the dream would be to to have a, a, a radio station here, um, and you know, I um, certainly you know there's budget concerns and and. Um, you know stuff like that, uh, logistics that are that are tough, and uh, uh, equipment that you need. Uh, it just seemed like you know an online station is just um, you know very practical. You know you don't need a tower. Um, you know you don't even need like dedicated space. You know we have it on a laptop, so I can you know I could broadcast from anywhere I, I want basically uh, on, the, on the you know on the college grounds. So um, you know it just it, it provides us with a, a lot of flexibility. It also gives us um, you know just a um, we, we can reach a lot of people, right? You know, people in Japan could, you know, potentially be, be listening to us. So, that, so, um, so that's like a big benefit of, of like online streaming is it's, is it's, is it's so widespread. Right. Yep. Yep. Um, where would you, where, uh, uh, even with online radio, where do you think that, where do you think that, uh, that radio is going? Um, yeah, that's a tough question, and and um, I'll just, I'll just I'm not. As, as, we'll answer as best as you can. <laughs> sure. Um, uh, you know, I, I can't really say for you know um, w with any certainty what will happen, but um, I think you know some you know particularly terrestrial radio, you know your local traditional radio over FM and uh, AM. Uh, I think they will probably need to focus more on on local content. Okay, because um, you know people can access national stuff, um, you know, through satellite radio, um, internet radio, um, and so the one thing that like local radio stations can still provide is is that um, you know that local angle in the in the personalities. So um, while like in the '90s and the early 2000s, you saw kind of local radio become more nationalized, right? You have um, disc jockeys that aren't even in town. Um, and lots of you know playlists that that are maybe being you know figured out um, somewhere else. Um, I, I think with uh, you know I think we might move away from that. Maybe local stations will become more more local again because that's really the only selling point they have at, at right now. They're still local. Yeah, they're they're local, so they can give you the the, the weather and the traffic. Um, they can talk about you know the events that are um, you know that are unique to to your community. Um. Uh, with uh, with other with other media outlets like television, the internet, um, film, do you think, does, despite all this, do you think radio is going anywhere? Um, yeah, I don't think radio will will ever die. You know, I, I think people have sort of um, you know pre prematurely you know declared it uh, declared it dead, just like they they have with newspapers. No, but I I think radio will will always be there and uh, in in some form. Um, I don't know, just because it's. Uh, it, um, it's a very powerful, powerful medium, and uh, I think because it, it you know relies on people's imaginations. It's a you know you, you could consider it maybe a more rich um, medium than than you know something like like television. You know, so when when you're listening to uh, an on-air personality, you know you're kind of picturing in your mind you know what they look like and you know maybe the gestures they're they're making, you know what their studio looks like. That's all. That's your own. It's your own personal experience. And you know it's not the same with with television or or film. And television sort of like everything sort of like fed you all. The, yeah, all yeah. The, all the visuals and stuff. So there's a bit more I don't know, mystique about radio, right. I guess. Yeah, it's it's I th I think it's more personal, and I think people really. Um, I mean, you look at these these people like Howard Stern or or Rush Limbaugh. You know, people who've made a lot of money in radio. Um, it's because they've a really they, they've established a personal connection with their listeners. You know, their listeners feel like you know these are their friends or their you know their buddies or something, um, and and I'm not. I, I think you can do that with television, but I I'm not sure it's it's um, quite the same. Um, now with, all, with the uh, with the students that you've had, um, do a lot of do a lot of them have a a passion for radio, um, or is it or is it just kind of, or is or are they still are they still figuring out where they where they want to go? I have encountered a few students that are that are really into radio, and that's you know clearly what they what they want to get into. Um, you know, other people are kind of um, kind of you know still figuring things out. 
Um, I would, you know, recommend that people are are flexible as far as you know what they want to do. Um, just you know because of um, because of the economy and, and you know practical aspects of of the job market, right? I mean, you might not find a radio job, so you know maybe be open to to television or um, you know uh, print journalism or um, online blogging or something. You know, uh, what what kind of personality do you uh, do you have to have in order to work in well? well well, the radio business, or or even or even any any media outlet. Yeah. Well, and ra radio tends to have some some interesting characters. Um, uh, I'm not sure that there's any one personality because I've seen lots of different ones that that and they all work in their in, in their own way. Um, I've seen people that are that are very introverted. You know, if you encountered them on an ele elevator or something, I mean, you could barely get them to say um, two words to you. But then you put them in front of a microphone, and and boom, you know, they're they they're larger than life personalities. Um, so, you know, it's hard to say, um, you know, what type of personality, um, you know, will succeed. I mean, it was certainly, um, I mean, you got to work hard and you got to be, um, um, you got to be assertive. You got to have that sort of get up and go attitude. Yeah. Yeah. About you. Yeah. And that's, that's probably true for, for any industry. And, uh, I'm trying to find somewhere to wrap up here. Um, and, uh. And to wrap up, um, what, uh, just just generally, what what would you say um, is the is the biggest thing that you learned working working in uh, working with the radio business? Hmm, that's interesting. Um, huh. Wow, that's a that is a tough one. <laughs> the biggest thing I've learned. Hmm. Well, I guess. I mean, well, one thing I've learned is, you know, uh, and it's it's a cliche, so you know, maybe it's a bit of a cop out, but um, you know, just that you, you you can't please everyone, and I think um, when you're when you're working in that industry, um, you know, you're just you're you're working hard trying to get um, ratings, right? You want people to listen, so you 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 spend all this money on research, and you um, you read all the trades, and you um, you do all sorts of things to to try to figure out, you know, what are the right records to play, um, what's the right type of content, um, and no matter how hard you work, you know, you you um, I mean, sometimes you are successful, you know, and you you get you, you get you know better ratings, but you know that it, it's never perfect, right? And it, it I guess it's because you know people are different. Um, so you, you can't try to be all things to, to all people. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I guess, I guess that's it, you know, just, uh, um, I would say focus on, uh, a particular thing that you do, do well. Like a, you know, I think a radio station should be kind of one thing, um, and, um, stay true to it rather than, you know, trying to. Yeah, you know, if you think, yeah, I can reach, you know, um, teenage girls ages 15 to 20, you know, by playing, um, you know, dancey hip hop records or something, then um, you should just do that, right? And and forget about, um, you know, your own personal taste. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's another th that's another thing, you know, I learned is is you really can't let your own personal tastes get in the way. Um, and but that's it's tough. You know, I'm a big music guy, and and to some extent, when I was in radio, I, I think. Um, because it was a job, it did sort of um, hurt um, or impact the, the joy I, I got out of music. Because when I was doing that job, I was constantly thinking about, um, you know, is this record a hit? You know, is there a hook, um, you know, that'll, that'll get people to, to listen or that people will like? Um, and well, once I left radio, it actually took me a little while, a while to, to stop um, listening to, to music that way and to just start, you know, enjoying it uh, again as a, as a personal e experience. Okay. I don't think that's about it. And... Right, now uh, tell us your name and uh, what, you, uh, what you do here at 97 Rock. Dave Jixter, 97 Rock, promotions director and on-air personality. Uh, how long have you been in the radio business? And, that's, uh, and this goes back to my... I've been in the radio business... Uh, actual radio. I see. I started. I started. In, started on an AM radio station in 1998. 98. 1998. So a long time. Not, not as long as the guys I work with here. They've been in a, a really long time, and um, everybody that works here, I actually grew up listening to. But um, 
I started, my, my first radio job was like June of 1998, I'm pretty sure. June of 1998, and uh, where was that? It's at a, a, a AM radio station, it's still there. Uh, the call letters were WCJW, Country Western. Oof. <laughs> yeah. They played both kinds of music, country and western. Well, you did your time, I guess. Yes, sir. Um, Great place, though. They're still there. They're actually AM and FM now, and I still st stay in touch with um, my boss, who is the owner. I, I still talk to him at least once a month. Nice. Um, now you're the uh, you, you're the promotions director. Can you tell us? Can you give us a little bit of background info on as to uh, what goes on with the what the promotions? Yeah, department? being promotions director, uh, every on-air giveaway uh, goes across my desk. I'm required to make appropriate uh, winner sheets for the jocks to read the actual prize. I work very closely with the sales staff to make sure uh, I have the wording right for what we're giving away. Um, uh, so I'm responsible for, for, for all on-air giveaways. Um, we also uh, organize uh, promotions, um, contests, like for example, uh, we have a hot mom contest. I organize that and um, we do some on air giveaways where I give away a trip. Uh, I'm, I'm behind all that. When we're on location, I uh, make sure we have the right people hired for each event and make sure that we look good at each event. And um, 97 Rock does a lot of events and uh, does a lot of sales remotes and is at a lot of concerts. So my job, it's not a hard job, it's just a very demanding job, um, time-wise. Um. But it's uh, enjoyable. Uh, what, uh, uh, why did you actually uh, decide to go into the radio business as opposed to some other um, form of media, like television or, or um, Well, w with radio, um, sometimes you, you, you do some TV. So I just always loved radio. I always loved listening to it. I love the guys that um, I grew up listening to who I work with now. And I all, I've, I've wanted to do radio since I was like seven years old. So I've always wanted to do it and never thought about doing anything else. Right. Now, um, now, uh, in the, being the promotions director, you have, to, you have to work with a lot of college students. Um, what, are some of the, what are some of the cost benefits kind of thing, good and bad type? With yeah. Working with college students? With college uh, students. The bad thing is sometimes they don't have any experience or, or clue of, of, of how radio works. So sometimes, you know, it's, it's frustrating um, to get somebody as green as somebody doesn't know anything. Um, but on the other side of the coin, is it's also very rewarding to see uh, that college student like the business, learn the business rather quickly, and enjoy being here. That's, that's, uh, that, that's definitely a good part of, of, of the job. Uh, now, when you're, looking for, uh, when you're looking for new hires or new interns, um, what would you say are, uh, is the um, is your idea of the uh, ideal uh, promotions worker or, or person? In well, I, I think the ideal college student. I, I think the key is you have to want to be here. It's not like uh, it's not like one of those boring college courses that you have to go to and that you hate. Uh, anybody who um, is is majoring in communications and wants to be in radio should want to be here at 97 Rock because there's a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of networking opportunities. There's a lot of learning opportunities. And there's just a lot of fun opportunities to take advantage of. So I, I think if you want to be here, um, you're gonna excel. And I've seen many, many students over the years excel because they enjoyed being here and, the, and they wanted to, after their internship was done, they actually wanted to work here, so. Um. Um, now, should, um, be, um, being an intern, uh, you make a lot of mistakes, um, and and one of the, and one of the things that it's that, that that could come across as intimidating as they're um, they're they're almost afraid to make, to make mistakes. Should should they really be afraid to make to, to screw up? No, not at all. No, nobody's made. Trust me. Trust me. No one's made more mistakes than myself. <laughs> I've made a lot of mistakes on air and off the air. So nobody should be afraid to make mistakes. Um, that's part of it. That's part of life. Life's filled with mistakes. Um, 
uh, now working in the radio business, um, are the, um, are, uh, what, are, what, are the, what are some of the skills that, that, you, that you would acquire that say if you decided not to, not, not to work in radio and go into another field, um, what are some of the skills that would sort of translate? Uh, and, this could, and this doesn't have to involve technology or anything, just... Skills that would translate into another field? Yeah. Uh, I, I think networking skills I, I think are very important. It's, it's, no matter what job you have, uh, networking is very important because no matter what job you have, uh, you might find that you need somebody else to help make your job successful or whatever. So networking is huge. You meet a lot of people. Um, obviously in radio, you deal with the public, so you want to have good people skills. And good people skills, I think, is, is the backbone at any job. You want to, whether it's with your coworkers or with the public, you want to have good people skills. So, um, yeah, I, I think radio could really mold somebody into a, f a really great employee in a marketing field or any other field. So, uh, so in any field where there's a lot of, where you have to, where there's a lot of networking. Which, mm -hmm. so. um, now, uh, be now being in the radio business since 1998, that's that's a that's. That's all. That's almost twenty years. Mm -hmm. um, what have you noticed that has changed over over the course of that, over the time you've been? Uh, technology. Um, I remember um, my coworkers recording commercials on like a reel-to-reel -reel tape deck, <laughs> which you see in a museum now. Uh, now it's all digital. Um, uh, do you find that's like easy? Um, do you find this digitalization is easier? Oh, oh, most certainly, <laughs> but. Um, you know, I remember playing CDs, and now it's all digital too. You hit a button, you hit a touch screen. So, uh, technology has definitely changed. Uh, I think radio, um, it might have peaked, but radio is still a very big part of a lot of people's lives, and, and radio will never will never die. It'll, it'll never go away. It'll never go away to satellite radio. It'll never go away to iPods. Radio will always be there with the local connection of the jocks, uh, the local forecast, the traffic reports, the news, um, just talking about local things. Radio, radio will always be up there. Yeah, that kind of, um, yeah I, was, um, I was actually just about to ask, um, where do you think radio is going to go in the future? Like, um, like do you see it uh, ex um, expanding or um, you see, like, um, like, like local stations like 97 Rock. You see those becoming bigger. Uh, perhaps bigger, um, but yeah, ra radio is 97 Rock's here to stay. The local connection is, is huge, and people listen to the radio for that local connection. They want to hear that DJ that they know. Um, a DJ that they know is like a friend of theirs. They're going to want to hear the local traffic, the local weather, the local news, um, the local reports of a concert or they're gonna they're gonna want to hear that local connection uh, now what's the most important thing uh, out of uh, out of all the lessons you've learned working in this business what's the most what would you say is one of the most important things that, that you that you've taken away uh, the most important thing say that say that again uh, most important lesson that you the most important work you've learned the most important lesson I've learned I try to tell my interns and, and, and I told myself is try to never say no I can't do that or I don't want to do that because the more you say yes when they ask you to do something you become their to go guy and the more you say yes and the more dependable and reliable you, you become to your boss uh, the more chances of air shifts and the more chances of landing a permanent air shift would become will become so I've uh always made myself available for any time uh, a jock couldn't make it to work. I don't think I've ever said, no, I can't cover for that person. I've changed all my plans and, and uh, made an effort to get in and do something for the station when they ask me to. And that just, I think, really shows determination and, and will land you a full-time job in, in um, a career that's, that's really kind of hard to come by now. So, um, so, kind of, so to kind of wrap it up, um, your um, your biggest piece of advice for a college student, like well, like like ourselves, um, who want who want to get into this business, is um, be proactive. 
If you want to get into this business, when you, you need to want to, you need to have that passion behind it. If you're not sure of the passion, you know, then try to get into a station and do an internship because you'll know or I'll know if, if you're into it or not. Um, and what you would learn here if you decide not to, the people skills and the networking skills you can always use at another, another job in life. It'll help you. Tell, tell us your name and uh, what you do, what your job title is. Uh, my name is John Pacillo, but I, I go by JP on 97 Rock. I, um, I assist with the music selection here on 97 Rock. I do middays, and I also am the public address announcer for the Buffalo Bills. Mm, what's that like? What's it like being the public address announcer yeah. for the It's It's great. I've been a Bills fan since I was just a kid. And it's uh, it's really it's really really cool. Um, you get to see uh, my favorite sports team in action, and I'm the guy that says first down Buffalo at the 23 yard line. So you're so everybody gets to hear your voice in the stands. In the state, I'm the guy that you hear say touchdown Buffalo. I'm I'm that guy. Yeah, I've been doing that for six that's, years. That's that's got it's me. it's a it's a cool gig. That's got me. cool. Yeah. Um. Uh, now, how long have you been in in the radio? Not I, just the 97. I've been in the radio business since 1976, which is um, 36 years, and I've been here at 97 Rock for 17 years. Yeah. And um, now, what sort of changes have you noticed um, uh, uh, happening in the, uh, in the radio business? Well, the, the, I'm sorry? What's changed? What since you first started? Presentation of the music. The way we do our radio show is the biggest change. When I first started, we played albums. You're familiar with albums? and Actually, believe, believe, vinyl? It not, believe it or not, I am. Yeah. I, I, I actually am. I have, uh, my dad actually has a stack of vinyl in the I have one for you. How about 45s? They were little records yes. with a big hole. I, I, <laughs> I yeah, actu I actually, I actually know, I actually know about this. I'm. We used to play those back in the day, <laughs> and that's the biggest change. It went from uh, playing albums and forty fives, um, and actually get when I would do a radio show, we would have our walls would be filled with albums, and we'd have racks and racks and racks of albums. And by the time a five hour radio show was done, there would be albums strewn all over the studio. Now, with with everything being on a computer, being digital. It's, there's no cleanup. There's no fuss, no muss. Um, That's the biggest change. Um, now, um, now, in terms of being an on-air jock, there's a lot of, I, I know, people have a lot of sort of assumptions about it. Um, like, oh, it's, oh, it's cool. it's, oh yeah. I, they like to say, oh, I can do that. Yeah. All I have to do is talk on the microphone. Is that really the case? Or is it, or is, there's more to that. Well, there is more to it. And it's interesting when we have each year 97 Rock hosts the guest DJ weekend. And a lot of our listeners, we give them the run of the ship for a weekend, if you will, and, and they get on the radio and say, "Well, I can do what you do," and then they get on and they kind of hum and hum and hum and hum and hum. So it's there's there's preparation. It's um, it's it's not as easy as it looks or sounds, really. I mean, because it's live. I mean, you're not you're not doing. There's no recording. It's it's you and twenty five thousand people listening and. Uh, you have to keep the show going. You have to have something that you feel the audience is going to be interested in hearing. But you can't talk too much because they're really not tuned in to hear you. They're, they're tuned in to hear the music that they like, and 97 Rock delivers on that. Um, now, what are some of the uh, goods and uh, the pros and cons of working in the radio industry? Well, I mean, for me, for 36 years, I've always said it's, it, it beats working. It's never seemed like a job. I think if you can go and do something and make a career out of something that just doesn't seem like a job, then you've, you know, you've, got, you've got it licked. So um, the, the, the pluses is coming in, you know, I count, count the pluses every day. I mean, I come in, I, I, I work with people that I've known for many, many years. My colleagues have been in the business a long, long time. I get to play the music of my life. I mean, the music that we play on 97 Rock is my is my music, it's Led Zeppelin and the Beatles and the Who and Rolling Stones. And um, it's not physically taxing. I have a lot of friends that do physically taxing work, but it's mentally taxing because you always have to be on. So that's a plus and a minus, I guess. Uh, um, is there a specific type of person that, that, um, that, that you have that, well, let me rephrase that. 
Is there are there certain kinds of characteristics you have to be you have to have in order to in order to, in order to, in order to be an on-air jock? I think it varies. I think I I got into radio because I love music. And I was, I just wasn't gifted as a musician, but I knew I wanted to be involved in the, in the music business somehow, some way. So that was what attracted me to it. Now you get someone like our, our morning guy, like Rob Lederman, who's, who's very, very funny. What attracted him, I would assume, and I don't want to speak for Rob, but he wants to do his shtick and make people laugh. And that's the reason he's in, in radio. Um, uh, there's, there's different there's different r reasons for different people getting in radio. I can only speak for myself. I got in because I love music and I wanted, it's been a major part of my life and was when I was a kid and I wanted to share that knowledge of the music. I wanted to share that passion for the music with uh, people who feel the same way. So that's the reason I'm in. Um, now, uh, now, uh, now uh, you do a lot of uh, live remotes. Mm -hmm. uh, where, uh, where you have a where you have broadcast for yourself, <coughs> and you're working with, and you're working actually with um, the college students um, who are who are in the promotions department. What is that like? Can that get annoying or? or, or no, or, not at all. Not anno annoying at all. It's 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 great because it's the next generation, and it's the next generation who want to get into the radio business. Now, some want to get into promotions. Some want to be on the air. Some just are here to see if I want to get into this aspect of media, this th this avenue, or do I want to get into. Uh, television or do I want to get into music engineering or whatever so it's we're all in the same boat be it the the ones that have been in the business for 36 years or the ones that are here interning we all have we all share the same passion so if there's anything that we can give to the college students any any knowledge we can pass on to college students that's great no it never gets it, it never gets old it's always good to see the next generation come in um, uh, uh, since you've been in the radio business for for, for so long and uh, seeing so many changes, uh, <coughs> what do you feel is would be the uh, uh, where do you think radio is going? What do you foresee as the future of this of this medium? I think it's very bright. I think with as far as personalities go, the next generation coming in, it's great. Um, there are there are always going to be ones that have the passion for the music, passion to um, share knowledge, talk with people, share stories. Radio, radio is great because people, people are always looking to get information about their local sports team, about the news, things that happen here. That's why I'm not a big fan of, of, of satellite radio because there's nothing localized about satellite radio. So I think as long as people are passionate about music and want to be informed and want to have someone that they can count on for I mean, when, when, when you need information about a snowstorm, about something major, people go to the, go to the radio. They, they want to know what's going on. So what's the future of radio? Future radio, I think it's, it's great. And I think it, with young people coming into the business, I think it's in great hands. Um, now, um, now, coming into the business, are there certain, uh, what are the sort of qualifications you have to have, whether, whether it's like a, a degree, um, education-wise, or personality-wise? First, you can't expect to make a lot of money. <laughs> First and foremost, okay. yeah. um, but um, what what are the qualifications? I know I've said this a lot, and I hate to keep using the same word, but it's passion. If you come in with with passion, I don't have it. I never went to college. Maybe I shouldn't say that, but I didn't. That's okay. You know, I, I I didn't. I came in with a passion and a want to do it, and I think it's 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 your will to to want to want to make it happen that's that's what you have to have the drive and just know that there's going to be days where you're going to be if if you come in as a student and you're interning there's going to be days where you're going to be sitting in a parking lot at one bill's drive it's six o'clock in the morning getting ready for a tailgate party that you really don't want to be at but it's it's it's, it's all part and parcel of what comes with 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 being in 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 this business and, and starting off in this business so it's just the will to want to do it um. Now, uh, what would you say is the most important thing that, that you, as a that you as a as a person, have, uh, have, have learned in, in this business that you want to that you want to pass on to someone someone like me who's trying to who's trying to get in uh, about this business? Um, or uh, I'm I'm sorry, run that by me again. Sorry, like, sorry, I'm kind of I'm kind of going off of a, uh, of a sheet here. But, yeah. um, what? 
What is the most important thing that you've learned work, from working in this business that you could pass on to the younger generation, you would like to pass on to, to the younger generation? That people count on you, if you're in radio, people count on you for a lot. People feel that you are a part of their day-to-day -day routine. People feel that we've been invited to people's homes for Thanksgiving dinner, for Christmas dinner. You are a part of their family and you have to take that very, very seriously. When you come in here and you are on the air, on air I'm speaking for, when you're on the air and you're talking, you're sharing their work day with them. You're, you're sharing a, a good majority of each day with these people. They've come, to, they've come to know you very, very well and there's a responsibility with that that you can't you can't bluff them. You can't. You just. You just give them facts. You give them information, and you're there for them. And whatever they need, you deliver on as much as you can possibly deliver on. Be it a request. Be it. Be it out there in the, uh, in the community. Ninety-seven Rock is 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 is, is always in the community. Um, it's so that just big tour bus. Now. The big <laughs> tour bus. Yeah, you like the big tour bus? It's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. We're not a cop. We're not a cop. Uh, no, it's 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 a cool tour bus, and we we uh, we're we're where we need to be, and um, so that's it, it's the responsibility that we have to people who are ninety seven rockers um, to deliver on uh, to deliver on what we um, what we say we're going to deliver on. Yeah, that's not all, I have. Ben, you got all right, now uh, tell us your name. My name is Scott Gaddy. S C O T T G A T T I E. Uh, what do you do here at the WBNY? At WBNY, my official title is Production Director and Student Engineer. My unofficial title is Guy People Call When Stuff Breaks slash Song and Dance Man. And I am one of the three hosts of the BLT radio show. Uh, BLT standing for Bo, Lars, Trevor. Bo being my alias here at the radio station, Lars and Trevor being my co-hosts. Um, how long have you been here? How long have you been at uh, Buff State? Uh, at Buff State, I, my first semester was in the fall of 2009. It is my last year at Buff State right now. And I've been doing WPNY since the day I got here, the third day of orientation. I popped in here, wandered around a bit. Oh, it's a little, uh, little claustrophobic in here. You know, ended up in the, uh, in the studio somehow. Met up with, uh, the would eventually become the sports director and then the program director at the time and you know talk to them and it all blossomed from there now where do you think you're going to go after uh, after you graduate from Buff State? I have no idea but I'm perfectly okay with that I definitely want to work in you know the commercial radio industry or some sort of branch off of that because obviously technology is always changing there's a lot going on with social media and podcasting and a lot of different channels like that and I'm sure I could uh, talk your ear off for a while about about that one but I guess most of all I want to connect with an audience wherever that audience may be now, well, what, got, uh, what inspired you to get into uh, the broadcast industry uh, mostly radio in particular <sighs> well I kind of, I kind of fell into it a little bit. I did uh, my high school's television station and found it was a nice little uh, outlet where I could do my own thing and then be as weird as I wanted to be on a platform and uh, you know feel like I was doing something that I really loved. And then I came here and. <laughs> Oh man, BNY has just completely changed my life, and I can't imagine now doing anything else. Uh, now you also work for uh, Cumulus Broadcasting. Yes, is that I do. Correct? Th that is correct. I I work part time at uh, at Cumulus Buffalo. Uh, now, what do you do? <clears throat> I do a, a lot of different things uh, here and there. I call some folks that win prizes. I work with different promotional events that might be going on. Sometimes I'm Sometimes I'm back in the studio uh, sort of flexing the skills that I learned here at BNY, actually, uh, in, in running the board and basically being an extension of the DJ's arms. Let's say they're out on, uh, on location or out some other scenario where they would not normally be able to run the operations and run the controls. I can, I'm back in the studio while they're out on location 
and can talk back and forth with them. And I put them up, fire different uh, production elements if they need a, like a backing bed or something. That's that's on me back at the studio. Now, uh, what uh, what is that? What is it like to work at a, uh, at a professional uh, professional radio station? Uh, it was certainly intimidating when I when I first got there to uh, to see about the uh, about the big times. Um, when I got a hold of the board, it was really interesting because it was a lot of the the same stuff that I had seen on the board here at the, at the college. It was just all in different places. It was all stuff that I was somewhat familiar with. That they had machines sort of that were designed by the same companies, uh, 360 Systems designed some stuff that both stations used, and they had similar ways of going about some things, but it was a lot easier to get used to the commercial radio environment thanks to all my experience that I've had here at Buff State. Now, uh, uh, what's, what, what would you say the difference between uh, uh, the college setting and the uh, professional setting is, if, if, there, if there is even a difference? Um, mm. What would you say that? It's a lot bigger of a pond, and I'm a lot smaller of a fish up, up in the big leagues, for one. Um, obviously, you know, they're a lot more streamlined and corporate. Everybody knows what they're doing, and everybody's on the same page. They're always having meetings for how to get every little thing down. BNY, it's a lot more laissez-faire and a lot more, uh, <laughs> a lot more, well, well, weird, but that's kind of the appeal weird of college radio. Way. Oh, absolutely. There's so many great weird angles on shows at BNY that you couldn't possibly get on commercial radio stations. Yeah, what kind of leeway does a college radio station have that a, that a regular commercial radio station really would? Maybe not FCC and content-wise. We are still an FCC licensed station here at the college, so we still can't swear, but it, it offers up a lot of niche programming in weird ways. Let me give you an example. The, obviously, for one, the BLT, uh, it's not really a show you'd probably see normally inhabiting uh, a major commercial radio station. Um, and the show right after us is a weird combination. It's called uh, the Sports Monarchy. They combine sports talk and production elements of like an old English king's court. Like it starts out like, uh, with a big fanfare and like, all rise for the monarchy of sports radio. And they go with that whole motif. Obviously, sports radio in the commercial world tends to be taken a bit more, more seriously than that. So that's not really something you would normally get. So there's a bit less, um, uh, uh, there's, uh, there's a bit less room to sort of uh, maneuver, like to have, to, to have fun. I guess you would say. I wouldn't say that, but it's just on different levels. Like they obviously still have fun on, on commercial stations, but it's within their constraints, and it's they're geared more towards what's going to sell and what's going to appeal to the bigger audience. We're doing what we do solely for the purpose of amusing ourselves, and if it amuses somebody else that happens to be tuning their radio dial, then cool, great, but you know, we're doing this for us. So when you first started uh, working at, uh, at, uh, at Cumulus uh, with uh, 97 Rock, uh, 103.3 and 1041, mm -hmm. uh, all those radio stations, was there kind of like a, uh, um, how would you describe the feeling of, uh, of meeting some of these radio personalities that you may have, you may have grown up with? Oh man, it was absolutely astounding and mesmerizing to be working across the hall from Shred and Reagan after I we were listening to them religiously for years and years uh, in my adolescence. And that's probably why I'm even a, a morning person now. People think it's weird that I'm a morning person. I used to get up just to listen to Shred and Reagan at 5.30 every morning. I still wake up at 5.30 every morning now. It's just out of habit now. Um, uh, other than that, I mean, it was a little bit of a shock. I certainly recognized their voices, but um, it was Shred and Reagan more than any of them that had a profound influence on me that certainly intimidated me the most. Um, I first got introduced uh, to Reagan. I seemed to block everything else out, and he 
seemed like he towered over me, even though we're basically the same height. Just in kind of like reputation, almost. Mm -hmm. God, I love those guys. It, it was even, it, I, was, I was still there for, it took a year of being at Cumulus till I had the balls to go up to, to ask them, hey, can I observe, you know, one episode of the Shred and Reagan show? And, you know, they eventually said, sure. And I didn't say anything just because I finally saw behind the scenes of everything I'd been listening to for so many years and saw all the process behind it. And by the way, like, Shred and Reagan is a show that gets podcasting for regular radio stations right. They, they do it right. And I, I really like what Jacka does there. Just a side note. Um, now, um, what, uh, what would you say your uh, best experience in, uh, in the radio business would be? I know that might be a hard question. To kind of... My fondest memory uh, overall so far, I'll be perfectly honest with you, did not happen at Cumulus. I haven't had my fondest memory there. There's nothing there that has trumped BLTIRL. Let me tell you that story, okay? So, we do the BLT show, as I mentioned. Uh, my name here is Bo, Lars and Trevor, BLT. And we go with that whole sandwich motif for the show. The first semester that we did the show, every other person that would stop by in the studio, every one of our friends that happened to be here in the lounge that would go into the studio and talk on the show for a little bit, they also got an ingredient name, a food based on the first letter of their first name that we would adopt for them, you know, like we had our friend Terrence on, so he would have been Twinkies. And we had a guy named Eric on, and he was Easy Mac, only because, you know, we didn't, only because it couldn't be ecstasy. <laughs> Joking things like that. And it was all just this theoretical sandwich. And about halfway through the semester, we ultimately decided as a group, this sounds really, really disgusting. Let's do it in real life and actually eat it. So the last week, of the first semester we did it, we, on that Monday, made a trek down to Wegmans and got all the different ingredients and a big loaf of bread and it racked up like 50 bucks worth of stuff uh, and brought it in the fridge here. And then on Wednesday, we ran a mic cable out into the lounge here, set everything up on the table and cooked stuff up in the microwave and made the sandwiches and a lot of folks actually ate them. They had, what was the stuff they had on there? Nutella, we had them covered with, uh, obviously, bacon, lettuce, and tomato. Um, it's special K cereal. Uh, we poured it in sugar, and, and ironically enough, the guy we nicknamed Sugar would later get diagnosed with diabetes. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, yes, he even, he even autographed, we still have the little canister uh, of sugar that he autographed the day that he got diagnosed, if we can see right there. Uh, it, had, it had cilantro on it, it had the Twinkies I mentioned, it had the Easy Mac. We had falafel mix, but, no, but, but nobody mixed it up into like actual falafel balls or any sort of shape. Uh, so we're like, what do we do with this raw falafel mix? We poured it into the Easy Mac and then cooked it in the microwave. It was absolutely disgusting. It was by far the worst part of the sandwich. Uh, I took one bite of it, almost puked, and I said, okay, that's enough. I have no regrets. Uh, I did it, but I'm not doing it again. Some, <laughs> some folks went back for seconds. <laughs> it was insane. Um, I'm going to remember that the rest of my life. And <laughs> that's... I can imagine. Something, yeah, something like that. So far, that's the proudest moment of my radio career <laughs> is BLTIRL. Nice. There you go. Uh, on a personal level, what do you, uh, what do you think is the best uh, thing about working in radio? Like, like, like the best aspect of it? Is it, um, is it the fact that you, get to, that you get to basically have your voice on the air, that people get to listen to you talk, or is it just the fact that, or is it something else? It's not even being on the air. Like, I don't mind doing behind the scenes stuff, production, engineering, what have you. It's the feeling of, you're directly influencing this entity, whatever it may be, that's impacting so many people in their daily routines, in their daily lives. It, even if I was just 
behind the scenes in engineering, making sure all the equipment doesn't blow up. I'm fine with that because it, I can still see the impact that it has there. And that's... Yeah, you're... Yeah, you're a part of a you're a part of a big team that, that, that keeps this that keeps this whole business going. Oh yeah, the glue that keeps things moving, the the grease it's, that keeps yeah, it together. That, yeah, that it's um it, yeah, it seems like that's um well, well in, in any form of production, I've always found that um, mm -hmm. I've always found that that's the case with the um where do you see the future of radio going in regards to today's technology? Whew. In the future. Glad you asked that question. Okay. Oh, my goodness. I'm definitely a lot more interested in what podcasting has to offer, though I feel like it's got to go in a certain direction for people to actually connect a lot more with it. Like, it's great on iTunes and different things like that, but people are getting more and more impatient, and there's a lot of changes that are going to have to be made for technologies that won't exist that don't exist in two years, <laughs> or that don't exist yet, but will in two years. Sorry for my uh, misspeaking. Uh, I don't know where I see the future of radio going, but I'm keeping my pulse on it as much as I can, and I'm going to try to be prepared for just about anything it throws at me. Do you have any advice for uh, future college students who want to get into the radio business? Yeah, just do it. Just, just, just do, do it. Decide um, what you want to be and go be it. Now when, you, now, when you first started working at Cumulus, you started as an intern, right? Of course. Uh, now, uh, well, um, and that's one way. What would you say the best way of, of, of getting into the radio business would be? Mm. Or is there a best way? Um... You gotta pour yourself out a little bit, uh, ad admittedly. Pour yourself out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I mean. Sorry. Yeah. I, I, for lack of a better word, that's just about it. If you go to thirty different stations saying you'll do anything, then chances are one of those stations is gonna have one thing that you can get your hands on, and then moral develop from there. Like obviously, you know, internships is one way to start. It doesn't have to be even be for like credit or pay or anything. You just observe them and watch to see how they do it and basically just hang out by 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 radio by the radio station. It's, you know, yeah. even more than just watching them do what they do. Learn from what they do. You know, take something into it. Because when I observed Fred and Reagan, I noticed the way I had always done things on BLT before was that I was on the board and I had my laptop to the side if I wanted to play like extra elements, like let's say we were doing our NFL picks and I wanted a little Sam Spence NFL Films bed. I'd have to reach over and put it up on the board and stretch around a little bit. When I observed Fred and Reagan, I saw that Shred was on the board and was firing some of the elements, but when they had audio from like news sources when they wanted to play like some viral video that was going on recently. Reagan had his own little mini board uh, on the other side that he could control and have sources play from there. And that directly influenced what I did on BLT. I said, why haven't I been doing that sooner? So for a few shows, you know, I let Lars or, uh, or a trainee of mine uh, produce, as in like run the board, and then I would be I sort of turned my laptop around a little bit, so I had the other sources that I could just fire from my laptop from there, and it was a lot easier for me, and the show ended up going a lot smoother. And, you know, you take different parts from everything that you see and try to mush it all together and create what you do. All right. Chris Jackson is going to do a quick interview with us mm -hmm. um, for his project. So uh, he's just going to answer the questions. Uh, you can introduce yourself real quick just yeah. to just pass him a mic and say, hey. Hey, guys. It's <laughs> DJ Jackson here. <laughs> hey, can you hear me better now? I don't, I, don't, I don't need a set of headphones or anything like that. Yeah, I can hear you. But, um, 
yeah, uh, yeah it's uh, it's great to be here on uh, on Jazz's show. I've, uh, I've, uh, I've been listening to it for the last couple weeks, and it's it's good. It's good. I wish we get more. Uh, we need to get more people involved with this. Am I right, Jazz? Yeah, and um, we appreciate you and everyone else who's been supporting us so far. And um, we got a lot of plans. Me, you, and a couple other people have plans for next semester to build Hawk Radio and make it even better. So, right. so uh, I guess y'all can hear us on our on-air interview real quick, and I'll uh, burn up some time. So go ahead, man. Let me just turn my chair around real quick. All right. Well, I guess everything is okay with you. Everything's fine. All right. All right. It's an interview within. An interview with a show within the interview, the within the show. All right. Doing it live. Doing, doing it live. Doing it live. Check them out. It's cool. Cool like that. All right, let's get started. Um, now, uh, well, what are each of your names? My name is Marquan Lowe. I'm a student at this college, Uber College. It's we're streaming live from the booth. This this short room. That's but that's not my whole name. Just that first two. Just the first two words. That's 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 my All name. Right. And my, name, my name is Jasmine. Um. Also known as Jazzy J, like he's cute. Just radio personality names that uh, we we made up for the station. Yep. All right. Uh, how long have you been going to Hilbert? Well, I've been here since the fall of 2009. Um, I got accepted, <laughs> and um, I've been here ever since. <laughs> yeah, I am a sophomore. I ain't, I ain't got as many stripes as Jasmine, but I'm in here. <laughs> what made you choose the uh, the uh, uh, media department, the yeah, DMAC department. Actually, it is a, tr a weird case for me because I am not a DMAC major. This I, is major. I'm a criminal justice major. I was a, a guest on one of one of the first shows that that Jazz had put up, and they asked me to co-host, and I just said okay. You know, so I'm not doing anything on Monday, and it was just something else I just I wanted to do, and I just I just stuck with it. Yeah, because the thing about um, was Q was like uh, we were gonna have him as a guest to talk, and then he came back for another week was talking, and then I just sat there and I was like, yeah, he's talented, you know, and um, you need feedback off of people to make good entertainment, and you need diversity, and um, the the things that he said like it's very enlightening. So I was like, yeah. I feel like, it, and also I think it would be a good thing because Lawrence, he's not here right now, but um, we're all in different uh, levels in our education. He's a sophomore, um, Lawrence is a junior, and I'm a senior. I will be coming back in the fall. I'll be a senior as of um, this coming January. So what our plan is to pass it down, the mic basically, um, get the connection going, you know, and then, you know, change it around and, and try to expand it for Hilbert College. And um, right now it's starting to really... Um, take off, and we're excited. All, all three of us, we work hard. We work daily because it's hard to uh, try to push a station. Yeah, but put up new content for everybody. <laughs> you gotta actually look. Yeah. And you just don't, we, yeah, just don't come to you. We'll be stressed out trying to find, especially when it's, it's boring, a boring week, you know what I mean? We, we sit there and be like, whoo, what are we gonna do? And we just yeah. had that today. <laughs> yeah. So, so you got, uh, do you guys always, some, you guys always seem to find stuff. Oh, yeah, it's always yeah. something to talk about. It's always but. something. But uh, like the election week, it was nothing on. It was nothing on nothing, TV. It was nothing. just full about. Just everything was about the election. This week is really quiet. I mean, the reason why we really don't have anything to talk about because everybody's studying. Yeah, it's, it's right finals. Now finals week. It's finals so. week, so we really, really don't have time to just be just to look around for entertainment news or or politics. We really is focusing on education right now. But we will yeah, so, this ra so this radio station, this radio show is kind of a, a side for you guys. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, it's uh, really a side for me, though. <laughs> it's, it's a side, but it's kind of like a first priority with me mm -hmm. because the level that I am in with school. Yeah. See, yeah. I'm a senior, you know, and um, it's kind of like it's push come to shove. And in this industry, you got to push yourself and um, try to get your doors open mm -hmm. for yourself because no one else is going to open those doors for you. Exactly. And um, if you if you have people that's willing to listen to you and, and um, willing to hear the things you have to say, you know, I say, why not? Why not do it? Why not get yourself out there as a whatever you are, as an entertainer, as a yeah. talker, as a whatever, you know, um, if you got the drive and determination. I mean, he's not even in this major, but like we said before, but nope. <laughs> <laughs> but he nope. got the mic, you know, and nope. um, hopefully next semester we have a lot of people with the mic and we just trying to keep it pushing, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, after you graduate, Jazz, where do you see yourself? After graduating. Um... It's kind of, that's kind of an open-ended question. It's very, oh, yeah. it's very yeah. broad. Um, I want to, I want, I want to eventually have my own entertainment-based uh, type of company, but uh, I want to try to start off small, 
try to do some more radio talking and stuff like that because I guess uh, we're good at it. People been yeah. telling us that we're good at it. So I want to try to stick to this platform. And also, um, I always wanted to do films, uh, like doing uh, short films and things like that. Mm -hmm. We grasped into that. Me and Lawrence grasped into that last year. So uh, we, we're just trying to push the idea of us as a group and try to get us established as people and uh, see where it takes us. Okay. Um, now, what drew, now what drew you to, uh, to, doing, to doing radio as opposed to, uh, I, don't know, I don't know, television or film? Um, that's funny. We actually, me and Lawrence were doing film. You get a few here. Yeah. Um, we were doing film. We had did an actual short film for um, the class uh, last year. And uh, that got really good reviews. I always wanted to be a scriptwriter, but what grabbed me towards uh, radios because of Don Vincent. And what happened was I was bored a lot of the time, so I just do YouTube videos just just cause, you know, just talking and stuff like that, and I just post them on YouTube. So then um, this coming September, you know, we've been talking about getting Hawk Radio going for a long time. This is all a freshman. So when when he said that they finally got the station going, I was excited. So he invited me um, to come to uh, I, I think it was a career fair. And when, that's when I met you. Um, yeah. For like a, a second time, for the first time during uh, the semester, and another person. And we were all out there. And um, I was nervous at first, but the more I talked, the more comfortable I got. Good, man. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of how that's kind of how it works in, with 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 radio, isn't it? Or is that is that is that what you found? Yeah, it, it, it's like um, I talk a lot in my real life, so I just feel like <laughs> and yeah. I already have, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just feel like. And I plus, for me, this is not like. When I came in, I wasn't nervous. I just just wanted to throw my two hay pennies in and just to see where where it was gonna go. But it's like a broader perspective. I don't know. I just I I really feel like it's a blessing because like we when we do the shows every week on the radio live, we record it for YouTube. So we try to basically it's all all we do is sit here and try to network and expand Hilbert Hawk Radio. And I just feel like it's it's a good way to also not only uh, get ourselves out there as students and as personalities but to give people from our school not e or people that's not even from our school that listen all over the place a chance to voice their opinion to hear stuff and to get caught up on the news from a younger person perspective and it's allowing us to be ourselves compared to other um scripted things yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not scripted in this in booth it's, it's, it's not. not it's not scripted no. um the only thing that's scripted is our hot topics like okay this is oh, going yeah. on yeah. And then we just go straight into the yeah. live. So it's really fun. It's it's fun. It's a fun process, mm -hmm. and we work real hard every week. Uh, what do you think are some of the uh, some of the benefits of uh, of having a, a student run radio station, whether it be online or 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 just or analog, uh, uh, at a college? What do you think some of the benefits to that would be? Freedom for creativity. Oh yeah, we can do. Basically, she she runs it. So basically, whatever she wants to do, unless it's unless it's not obscene or you can't use any type of words or like that. But other than that, it's completely free reign. Freedom. Do, yeah, basically what you want to do. Freedom for creativity. Also, it's 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 like um, because a lot of times it, it, you see people that they're doing work and they're doing work instructed by another person, and they're not actually doing what makes them happy. Or, or ex expressing themselves like who they are, and what what we do together is we're expressing who we are, and using the different talents that we have to put towards the station to make people be more intrigued by us as, as um as a talk show host. Yep. Makes it to inform, to inform everybody. Information also yep. just because to, just to inform people. Yeah, and also because uh, other thing is I notice about media is a lot of time media seems to slip on talk about important topics, and it seems like it's repetitive, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we, we talk about entertainment news, of course, to get the views and stuff like that. But we also talk about serious subjects that may not get that much uh, publicity or, or discussion on uh, any on other the, station. Yeah, on a mainstream type station. So we just, we're just trying to get a positive influence and uh, try to get, also, um, the um, thing that I like the most is being able to give other artists a chance that's oh, underground. Yeah. Um, being able to make sure the paperwork is right, copyright is straight, and to be able to get them to come in as guests and basically help not only work to get our careers on track, but to help other people get their careers on track also. Yeah. Um, kind of connecting fan bases, that's, that's something that's cool. And, uh, and, and one last thing, um, just from, the, uh, just from what, uh, what you've learned and what you've experienced working, doing this, um, what would you say, um, uh, uh, what would you say is uh, your favorite part about, about, uh, about doing that, about 
being on a on a college state on a college radio station. I'm gonna think. I'm gonna think about this. Where is he saying? You said the best part. Well, your favorite part. Favorite sure. part. My favorite part. Oh man. My favorite part is being able to just talk and tell people about the news and. Um, I love the feedback from people also um, because it, it just shows that the hard work is not going unnoticed and also it's given us the chance to connect with other people from different walks of life um, and, and people be drawn because we get all types of different people that say mm. they listen to us yeah. and we're connected. Yeah, a few <laughs> professors. We get people from professors to all types of different type of people from different walks of life that actually come and listen and it, it, it kind of shows that um, we might be different, but we're all alike on some things, and we all have a, a pretty much the same opinion on certain things and like to talk about the same stuff pretty much. Um, and, and also, mm-hmm. yeah. For me, well, my favorite part, I get to take a break from studying. I just come up here <laughs> after I'm sitting in my room or after work, and I just come come up here and I just do the show. And mm-hmm. I just have a, have a break, especially now. I'm doing a lot of studying for finals. Yeah, finals is killer. Um I got my exams next week, and I've been like, it's it's been hard going back and forth between finals, classes, and coming to the station. You know, um, I don't even. <laughs> sometimes I'll be wondering, do no. how do we do this? No, don't do it. We don't even know how we do this. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we just do it. Do you know. It. Now, one thing I always say to people is that um, we people say that they want to do stuff. When you want, you want, you want, you, to me, I just feel like you don't get anywhere. You just do it. Just do it. You know, mm-hmm. just do it. Like you want to do it, just do it. That's how we do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. As far as promotions go, I, I guess the opportunity to, you know, just to be um, at events, you kind of feel like you're, um, actually I was, so I, I worked in, in Rochester and I was new to the area. So, um, as a promotions person, I was just, you know, driving all over town and I was going to events every, you know, nightclubs and, and things like that. And so, I mean, I learned the city, um, you know, in just a few weeks. So, um, you know, you really can feel like you're, you've got your finger on the pulse of a, a community because you're just out there um, doing things all the time. Um, but, I, you know, I particularly um, liked, so I, after, actually after I was a board op, I kind of moved up and I became the, the music director for two stations. And um, yeah, my favorite part was really just figuring out, you know, what songs we were going to play um, in, in what rotation and, um, you know, figuring out what two songs should go together in a set. You know, I, I enjoyed just that like, kind of thing. Just like kind of cre- uh, creative stuff? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of it, I mean, particularly because I was working in commercial corporate radio, um, you know, it wasn't always a very, you know, um, creative experience. Um, but, um, but, but I, I, you know, I did have that opportunity, you know, I could, you know, pick out songs that I thought were, were going to be hits and that would work or, um, you know, kind of putting together the, the perfect hour of music or something was, was, was kind of fun. I also enjoyed, um, writing copy. So, you know, I would write copy for the promotional liners that would, would run on the station. And, um, I, I worked for an active rock station that was, um, targeting males, um, 18 to 34 so you could be kind of edgy with it and have lots of sexual innuendo in the in the lines and stuff so I mean that was always fun to, to, to write that stuff yeah, um, uh, uh, why, uh, why did you choose radio of all the of all the media outlets you could choose um, television. Uh, that's a good question I I guess I um, I've actually found out since that I'm sort of like a I guess they call it like an oral learner or an audio learner so I, I think I'm just kind of geared more to, to sound than, than visual. Um, you know, I, I, you know, in college, you know, I dealt a little bit with, with uh, you know, video production and stuff like that. But I, I guess I always just cared more about the um, sound, you know. So I think I, uh, I've just had a, a stronger connection with music and, and radio, uh, radio personalities. Um, now, um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of colleges uh, uh, nowadays... Um, a lot of colleges have have a have a radio station, whether it's whether it's online or, or actual analog. Um, mm. Did they have anything like that when you were when you were in college? Yep. Yeah. I uh, when I, I went to Geneseo, so we, we had uh, W. Geneseo. My brother actually goes. There. Oh, good, good. Yeah, my sister went there, so. Um, he's, uh, he's loving it. Is he? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Good. Um, but yeah, so we had WGSU there. I had a. I actually didn't. 
um, end up working there till like my last year at, at the college, I think. Um, but, you know, I did a shift in the middle of the night and it was a lot of fun. We actually had, you know, we still had like a record player there uh, and we had lots of, we had lots of cool old, uh, old video, or I'm sorry, old vinyl. Um, and, uh, and I, you know, I played lots of stuff that I, that I liked, but we also had like a modern rotation of music that was, that was cool. Now, um, as a college kid, getting um, interning with a with a major with a major radio station was that intimidating? Would you say? Um, it's intimidating when you when you start out, um, you know, like the interview process and then going there. And I mean, there's just a whole um, you know system or operation going on, and you have no clue, um, you know. It, what what's happening and, and what your role is supposed to be so it certainly is intimidating and uh, you know I can be somewhat of a, a, a shy person uh, you know with people I don't know so um, you know I had to kind of challenge myself to kind of speak up and say hey no I can do that or you know no I want to be on the air or something like that so um, you know an important thing to be uh, is is assertive okay even if it's not in your in your nature you know you got to let people All right, now uh, uh, tell us your name. Uh, Donald Vincent. Um, and uh, what and your uh, job title? Uh, I'm uh, Associate Professor of Digital Media and Communication at Hilbert College. Um, uh, and uh, how, long have you, uh, how long have you been here at Hilbert? Uh, this is my sixth year at Hilbert College. Uh, what's, uh, what's your favorite thing about teaching here at Hilbert? Hmm. Well, my favorite thing about about teaching uh, at Hilbert College is the, uh, the the students. I just really enjoy interacting with young people. You know, particularly as I as I get older um, and maybe uh, out of touch with uh, um, with you know younger culture. You know, it's nice to to keep in touch with with uh, um, with younger people. But you know, I, I just like uh, I, I like interacting uh, interacting with people, and um, this is. I know it's just a comfortable way for, for me to, to, to do that. And you know, I guess I'm also somewhat uh, egotistical, so I, I like to be the, the center of attention sometimes. Egotistical? Yeah. Is that how you say, is that, is that how you think all college professors are? Yes, to some, yes. To some extent? Yeah, all of them are. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, there, there's certainly some egotism there. Or, or maybe it's just, uh, you know, I, I guess I... I think everybody has a dream in their life. You know, they want to be, a, you know, the star of a show or, you know, the front man of a band or something like that. And so, you know, I couldn't do any of those things. So, um, you know, for a short period of time, and even if it's just a, a small group of people, you know, I'm kind of the, you know, I'm the star of the show. So, so I like that as well. But no, but really the, the, the I, I just like, you know, hanging out with, with young people. Mm -hmm. um, now, you also worked in the radio business. Yep. Um, uh, uh, how long? Uh, how long does he were you in the radio business? Uh, I'm not sure. It, uh, it seems longer than it was actually. Probably um, three or four years. I actually, started out as a as an intern. Um, you know, my last semester of college, um, and I I interned in the promotions department, um, which was nice. Um, you know, uh, particularly you know that's actually where I got uh, you know a lot of my you know sort of marketing experience or it introduced me sort of to the world of of marketing and um, you know figuring out how to you know um, get your station's logo out there and present at, at events and um, you know figuring out you know how you can draw people to the station um, and also at the same time I ended up you know doing some some production work you know which was nice uh, and then I got hired as as a promotions assistant so I was you know driving the van and um, you know setting up events but it was cool you know I got to go to a lot of shows and sporting events and you know I met some some famous people here and there um, but you know that really wasn't what I wanted to do in radio you know I really uh, intended to to be doing stuff um, you know on the air um, or you know at least having something to do with the the on-air product so eventually I got the oppor opportunity to move over to the programming side um, I was actually board opping um, yeah, um, yeah, uh, how did that go? How did board hopping? How was the board hopping? Um, well, but I mean, it's uh, it's interesting. So I was actually board hopping the the Howard Stern show locally. Really? What was yeah. that like? 
Um, it was cool. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not as exciting as it sounds, I guess, but, um, you know, because basically, you know, the feed would, would come in and, and um, yes. so you're there kind of listening and then you just, uh, you know, have to make sure the, the right commercials play yes, at the right time. from an outside source as opposed to being in the, right. in the studio. Yeah. Um, but that was cool. You know, uh, it, it was tough waking up in the morning uh, and I had a million other tasks um, that I also had to perform kind of while the show was, was going on. Uh, what would you say your favorite part about working in the, uh, well, at least the promotions and promotion side of the, of, uh, of the radio? Uh, the best part of it? Um, ah, that's, that's interesting. Or just in general? Um, as, no, you're there. Because otherwise you just kind of, you kind of blend in and, and people don't take notice of you. Uh, so other than that, what other, uh, uh, what other advice would you give to a, uh, to a college student who, um, who wants to get into the radio business? Other than, don't. Yeah. Like, don't. Um, well, it, it, I mean, it, it can be a, lo a lot of fun. Um, you know, I, I you know, it, certainly it's a, it's an industry that's um, that's changing. Um, there's there's fewer 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 and fewer jobs available. Um, companies are are hesitant to hire people full time. You know, so um, you know, I know lots of people that have been working at the same station for years, and they can't. They're still like part timers, even though they're working like 39 hours or something, so they don't have to get paid benefits. So um, so it is tough, but uh, I wouldn't discourage people if it really is their dream. Um, you know, to, to try working in, in radio, because um, if you have the talent and if you really work hard, um, you know, I think you, there is a place for you. Um, but, you know, what radio will look like in a few years, I, I'm not sure. I mean, certainly online components um, are, are much more important than before. Yeah, speaking of online radio, um, here, at Hill, um, yeah, here at Hilbert, we have the uh, we have, uh, Hawk Radio, which is an online station. Uh, now, uh, you, you're the, uh, you're the, sort of starter of that? Yeah, yeah, so I, I, I guess I, I can take credit for, for launching the, the radio station. Yeah, well, uh, what made you think of, the, of, of, an, of, an, of having, a, a, of Hilbert having an online radio station? Like, what, what, what sort of sparked that interest? Um, that? Well, it just seemed, uh, I mean, obviously, you know, the dream would be to, to have a, a, a radio station here. Um, and, you know, I'd, um, certainly, you know, there's budget concerns and, and um, you know stuff like that, uh, logistics that are that are tough, and uh, uh, equipment that you need. Uh, it just seemed like you know an online station is just um, you know very practical. You know you don't need a tower. Um, you know you don't even need like dedicated space. You know we have it on a laptop, so I can you know I could broadcast from anywhere I, I want basically uh, on the, on the 